friends. All right, Allison Jensen here at Orange Hazel School of Art, and I'm just, I'm late getting on today because I could not figure out how to set up my camera. <laughs> so I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing down here. And so you should see the contraption that I have rigged up. Um, don't fall. All right, so it is um, just after 11 o'clock, and all through winter break here at the art school, we're going to be going over um, kind of some fun ideas that you can do at home. So if you can't make it up to the art studio and you're looking for something fun to do with the kiddos, uh, we're looking for some different art ideas that you can do at home um, with the stuff that you already have on hand. So I'm going to just double check my camera here before I, yep, it looks okay. All right, we're good. I got uh, kiddos in the back room over there that are doing Shibori tie-dye today. Um, and we're going to do some sculpture. And then tomorrow, um, I want to be able to show you some fiber arts kind of in line with what they're doing. But, but I thought we'd do some sculpture today. So Monday, if you missed it, we did mosaic art. Uh, Tuesday, we did, which was yesterday, we did ice art really geared towards the preschool set. And then now we're doing um, some sculpture. So I'm going to be using just really simple kitchen ingredients. I've got, this is flour. I already pre-measured. Um, this is salt right here. And then this is some warm water here. Now, um, the ratios that we're going to use are really simple. This is one reason why I like this for a sculpture medium. Um, I love polymer clay and sculpty clay for the kids to be able to make miniature sculptures, um, but not everybody has that on hand, and it's not the most inexpensive thing that you can get. This is going to be really easy for you to make. I love Play-Doh. I do. Um, I think the drawback to Play-Doh is that most of your recipes are going to use either boiling water or they're going to be a cooking method where you have to actually get on the stove and cook. And the kiddos can't necessarily help you with that. This here, this salt dough that we're going to make is something that the kids can help you make because it's just a, a lukewarm or warm water right out of the tap. Um, and we're going to mix with our hands. So it's, it's really sensory. So if you have older kids, um, probably the purpose of this art activity is going to be the sculptures that result from it and giving them a really nice um, kind of clay substitute that they can actually oven bake and they can actually finish with paint. For our younger kids, this is going to be very similar to maybe how they're going to play with Play-Doh. And so anything you can do with Play-Doh, you can also do with the salt dough. The nice thing about it again is that it's so easy to make. So I will show you how to make it and then um, I'll show you some that I've already got conditioned and kneaded. So, so this is my flour. Now it goes in a ratio of one to two. So my, my salt is actually halfway full and my flour is all the way full. There's a huge margin of error here, so um, I don't really have to worry about it too much. Now I'm mixing in just a white tub from Dollar Tree because that's what I've got at the art studio. If you are mixing in your kitchen, most likely you're going to be mixing in a, in a kitchen mixing bowl, and that's totally fine. Um, we're just, this is what we have a million of these around the studio, so I like them. Uh, and so we're going to stir that together, and I just use my fingers. If your kiddos want to use a spoon, they can do that. All right. And I like to make this in small batches. It's just easier to control. So then I'm going to add just enough warm water to bring it together to a dough. It's kind of like making biscuits, right? So if I had a fork, I might use it. Um, I'm just going to use my hands. This is not a good time to be wearing like really dark colors. It seems like the days that I am wearing a black shirt and black pants are the days that I come into the art studio and we decide to make salt dough. So, this is the quick dough that we'll make if we're going to want to do, look, I can tip it up for you. If we're going to want to be doing some quick sculpture with the kiddos, um, it comes together faster than Play-Doh for us. Uh, it says we don't have to measure it as much. We don't have to heat the water. Um, so this is actually one of our favorites. And the kids enjoy the mixing process as much as they enjoy the building process. So it comes together into a dough. As it starts to come together, I'm going to add one more ingredient, which is over here. I'm going to add just a little bit of oil to it. So this is just vegetable oil, I had to check there. And I, it's just a little bit to add some shine to it. So I bet that, if I had to guess, I bet that's a tablespoon of oil. All right. So here we probably had a half a cup of salt, a cup of flour, and a tablespoon of oil. Um, and then water-wise, I just added enough to bring it to a dough. I bet maybe a quarter cup is all I use, um, but I don't ever measure my water. And you can use cold water, but I feel like the warm water kind of helps dissolve some of that salt and, and makes it a little bit smoother. 
Um, and I'm like kneading it here in my, my bucket because then I don't have to clean my counter. But if you have kids and they want to do some practice kneading just like you would for bread dough, um, you can flour up your, your countertop and go ahead and, and, and let them work this dough. Now the more they work it, the smoother it's going to get. It is. It's a lot like biscuit dough or, or cookie dough. Um, but it wouldn't taste good because it's only flour and salt and water and a little bit of oil. Now everything that they can do with modeling clay or that they can do with um, polymer clay or they can do with play-doh, they can do with this dough. All right, so once you have it all made up, the best place to store it is in a plastic bag like this. So this is stuff I made up this morning. Let me rub my hands off here and try to get some of this little things off. I'm also gonna lean towards my camera here and see if there's any comments that I need to answer questions. No, okay. If you have questions, you can, by, by all means, you can, you can definitely ask them of me. All right, so once you've got this all made up, your younger ones may want to just run it with the Play-Doh tools or practice making cookies on cookie sheets, which they can totally do. Your older kids can use it actually to form little sculptures. So um, I don't know if you've seen on Facebook, but we have quite a few different um, classes that have used a polymer clay. And you can do the same thing with this. So. Um, if I was going to make a little, uh, we made puppy figurines for one of our summer classes. And I can do the same thing out of my modeling clay. Let's see if I can back you up. You can see what I'm making here. Put that right there. So this could be, you know, there's the body. And then I form a little, little footsie. And he sticks on. Now, if it doesn't stick, you add a little bit of water. And it'll, and it'll stick on there. Um, and then you bake this. And that's probably the biggest difference between um, polymer clay or an oven baked clay and salt dough is that when you do the, the salt dough, it has to bake low and slow. All right, so we're gonna bake it at like 200 degrees, maybe 250, and you're gonna bake it for a long time. Because what you wanna do is you wanna dry it out from the inside out. You don't wanna you don't want to put it in a really hot oven and have the outside bake up um, and then we end up with you know a gooey inside and a hard shell on the outside so here's my little puppy doggy that I'm making I'll give him a head he's pretty cute Need a little bit of water oh, there's my water he's over here so you stick him on all right And if you don't want to bake it, this can be something that you just stick my little nose on, that you make and then you know sculpt anything you want and then put it back in the plastic bag and you know reuse it the next day. There are people that like to keep their salt dough in the um, the refrigerator; it stays a little bit a little bit longer, it doesn't get a funky smell to it. Uh, same thing kind of for play doh, but um, here's my little doggy ear. My crow's got the ear on him. Whoop, he fell off. Come on, ear. I'm gonna get two ears on and then I'm gonna I'm gonna pull my pull my camera down and then you'll be able to see him. Alright. Sculpture is so good for these kiddos. Um, you know, not everybody is a painter or a drawer. I, I am. I'm a, I'm a 2D artist, and my brain works in two dimensions. But, um, but there are um, students who are extremely gifted in thinking in the round, in thinking in 3D, and, and they need to be nurtured just as much as the ones who like to draw and paint. Um, and this is a good way to do that. So he needs a tail. Don't you think he needs a tail? I think he needs a tail. Give her a little puppy a tail here. Now, if I were gonna finish him off, um, I would use um, probably some, some kitchen tools, so like a wooden skewer or a spoon, and I would smooth him out, and I would add little details, and I would poke some little eyeballs for him. Let's see, let's see. Let's see if I can get him down here. Oh, there he is. There's the back of him. I'm gonna turn him sideways. There's the front of my puppy. Me too. All right.
that's all I got for you today. So if you do some sculpture with salt dough, um, please take a picture of it and tag me in it. Put it on Instagram or put it on Facebook and I'd love to see it. If you have any questions about um, using salt dough, by all means, reach out to me. There's also really great um, YouTube videos. So definitely look up some of those um, or just Google images and you can see some of the really cool things that people do with salt dough. Um, beyond the holidays, we see a lot of times salt dough is used in holiday time just to make ornaments, but, but you can use it for all sorts of things um, beyond just Christmas time and putting things on the Christmas tree. So, all right, that's all for me today. Have a wonderful Wednesday and we'll see you tomorrow. I can't find the finish button. There it is.